Welcome to your first COVID barrier project. Hi, I'm a master carpenter who lives in Brooklyn, New York. And in the next 20 minutes, I'm gonna show you how to build COVID barriers for your local stores. Urban communities rely on family owned businesses like delis and convenience stores for food and critical supplies. Many of these businesses do not have the resources to install well-designed solid barriers to prevent the spread of COVID. As a community volunteer, I have built and installed dozens of these simple barriers here in Brooklyn, New York. My methods and techniques have been improving as I go, so I created this video to pass on all that I have learned. This tutorial is intended for store owners, amateurs, and professionals. There is an addendum video for people that do not own a table saw. I strongly encourage complete newbies to buy or borrow the tools needed in that tutorial. Our production has been divided into seven parts. This introduction, design, frames, shrink wrap, installation prep, installation, and celebration. Part one, design. These barriers have been designed for low-income communities. They are inexpensive and effective. Do-gooders, like myself, Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts should refer to the link below to find the location of their second COVID barrier project. This is a collection of census data based on income in the United States. After you have bothered your local community with your do-goodery, move on to other places that also need these barriers. For my fellow New Yorkers, here is a map of our neighborhoods. The areas in black, red, and blue need the most support. When designing COVID barriers, you need to observe the counter. This open area near the register is important. You will see Slim Jims and Cliff Bars trying to take it over. Slim Jims are cheap and easy, while Cliff Bars are costly and precious. Neither of these products have the influence to obstruct the counter, and nor should you. The counter is a vital, transactional space that functions equally for clients and workers alike. To be a good COVID barrier designer, you need to understand the mistakes that I have been making. Let's take a look at the store that we are building and installing in this tutorial. I put the barrier at the front of the counter with a small 13 inch square door. Look how awkward it is for this woman to grab these two bottles of soda. This would have been slightly more functional had I made the height 15 inches. This gives the customer a bit of space to grab their bag. Better than that would be a broad opening at the front of the counter, also 15 inches tall. The best design for this store is a broad opening, 13 inches tall, set back at the center of the counter. Many businesses ask for doors. I no longer make doors in my COVID barriers. I point out to them the design principles that we are looking at now. That said, we are still going to show you how to make doors. Here is a simple example of this evolution. This is a deli with no barrier. This is my original, poorly designed barrier at the front of the counter with a small door. This is a better version with a taller, broader, simpler opening. And this is an ideal version set back at the center of the counter with a smaller opening. A panel with four parts and because each side gets a joint, eight joints versus a panel with 12 parts and 20 joints. I'm not saying don't make doors, but these are important design principles. Keep it simple. Many stores have a refrigerated display in front of their grill. For this busy section, I suggest a panel with a sign asking people to order from behind the panel. Try to keep in mind these ideas as you decide how to build your COVID barrier. Let's briefly dip into the engineering. I have chosen shrink wrap over plexiglass because plexiglass is expensive, heavy, and the tooling required to work with it is not common. Watch as I easily transport 14 linear feet of three foot tall barrier. This cost about $16 in materials and weighs 20 pounds. If I replace the shrink wrap with plexi, it would weigh about 90 pounds and cost about $250 and take twice as long to make. Most importantly, the super lightweight engineering of these panels greatly simplifies the installations. I have installed many stores with just tape. Now let's do the layout for the barrier that we are making in this video. 
I'm just trying to expose newcomers to as much of the process as I believe you need. It will be your goal to translate these ideas and techniques into your first COVID barrier. The counter is 95 inches long because my shrink wrap is 62 inches wide. I made the max width of panels 59 inches. To get to the end of the counter, I need an additional 36 inch panel. Because of the layout of the store, I decided to put a panel on the end that goes back, thus boxing in the counter. This panel also added structure to the whole layout. This panel is the width of the counter, 26 inches. The height of my panels are three feet or 36 inches. I subtract the width of my two horizontal pieces, which are an inch and a half wide, to determine the length of my vertical pieces. 1.5 plus 1.5 is 3 inches. 36 inches minus 3 inches is 33. So now I have four 33 inch pieces of wood to complete the two blank panels. We are also developing our cut list. When this is done, we are going to know how many pieces we need and what size to cut them at. Now let's focus on the panel with the door. I decided to put the door 18 inches from the left of the end of the counter. Then I decided to make the door 13 inches wide. We need to add the length of this 18 inch piece to the 13 inches of space here. Together, that is 31 inches. 59 minus 31 equals 28. The right side of this panel needs to be 28 inches wide. We need to drop in our 33 inch verticals. This panel requires four of them. Now, I love SketchUp and it may help visualize larger projects, but this is the type of thing you would do on a piece of paper. This piece here is super important but we are going to do that later. Now we are ready to move into the shop. Part two, frames. Always wear goggles while working with high RPMs and metals. I also like to use earmuffs whenever working with loud tools. It helps me stay focused. For those of us with table saws, it is much more cost effective to cut four three quarter inch thick by inch and a half wide lengths from one two by four. After you have gathered your materials, familiarize yourself with the design. If you haven't already made a shop drawing, you should. You need a reference of the layout with dimensions. The construction method is intentionally rough. It allows for minor measurement errors and imperfections in the wood. Because of that, we cannot cut any door parts yet. You might be planning for a 13 inch door, but end up with 12 and a half inches of space. So hold off on prepping for any door or opening parts. After you have laid out the pieces, you need to join them together. I am using 1 8 inch Baltic ply, which I suggest. Do not use Luon. I tried using Luon, but it was too brittle and broke when I flipped over larger frames. If you don't have easy access to 8 inch Baltic ply, Masonite, also called hardboard, is a great substitute and readily available. I cut a length of it at 3.5 inches wide, then I cut triangles out of it. This first stage of joint setting is the most important. Make sure the glue gets between the joints. This will be messy. Make sure that the triangle is an eighth of an inch away from the outside edge. This spacing creates a curve that protects the shrink wrap when it's stretched. When it comes to gluing up the joints, you don't want just enough glue. You need more than enough glue. I put two staples at the bottom of the joint, then I make sure the vertical piece is square while holding it in that square position, I lock it down with a third staple. Then I reinforce the joint, putting a total of three staples on each side of the joint. Once you have this front side of the frame completed, go ahead and measure the top. That is your actual measurement for the base. 
If you measure the bottom, it could be larger or smaller because of curves in the wood or mistakes made earlier in the process. The top there is your actual measurement. That is the size of your opening, regardless of your designs. You are going to go ahead and cut a horizontal piece to that measurement. You are going to mark the height of your opening And finally, you're going to add it to your frame with two more joint triangles. Now flip the whole frame over and continue jointing. The jointing on this side is a little different. You need triangle joints on each side of the frame at every joint location. You will find joints on this side that are not close together. Use this as an opportunity to create strength within your frame. As before, staple the joint in the lower horizontal piece then force the two pieces together before locking it tightly together with a staple on the vertical piece. You don't need as many staples on this side as the original, and you don't need to use your square with this side. You can't change anything at this point. The frame is complete, and you're going to move on to the door. Definitely review your drawing. You're going to be installing the door, and you want to do it from the perspective of the person at the register you want to be on the back side of your frame. This opening is 13 inches by 13 inches. So I cut a piece of wood at 12 and a half inches and placed it at the hinge side of the frame. When it comes to cutting plastic, there are special blades to use, but you don't need them. The crappier your blade is, the slower you need to cut. This plastic panel should be shorter by a half inch and at least a quarter inch less in width, smaller than your opening. Now you are going to drill holes into the plastic. Make sure that there is a soft surface underneath the plastic. Something like wood so that when the drill bit hits this surface, it also starts to go through it. When you are drilling into plastic, you don't want to force it. You are not so much cutting as you are melting. Go fast and use a light hand. Drill four holes on the hinge side and one for the handle. Before screwing this in, make sure that the plastic sets off the edge by about a sixteenth of an inch. Use number eight half inch pan head screws. Flip it over and get your hinges. When installing your hinges, the hinge pin, the round part of the hinge, should be facing up and it's your spacer. It's the space between the piece of wood you just screwed to the plastic and the frame. The bolts that come with drawer poles are not intended for such thin material, so you can buy number 8-32 half inch bolts and washers, or cut the bolt that it comes with. Attach the knob and check the door. Then remove the door from the frame, keeping the hinges on it, and put it in your kit for installation. We are going to move on to laying out the plastic. Part 3. Shrink Wrap The first part of this process is to remind yourself again what is the front and what is the back. You are putting the double stick tape on the back. Use heat and pressure to ensure that it sticks to the wood. A hairdryer on high should do the trick as well. For places like Home Depot, this is a seasonal product, but smaller hardware stores will have products like this in stock year round. Once you have done the entire perimeter, go ahead and put it out of your way. Clean your working surface and lay out the shrink wrap. Put the frame back on top and start applying it to the tape.
Hold the plastic taut at all stages of this process. You are going to heat shrink this on site, but we still need this to be well stretched at this stage. This material tears easily when cut, but it doesn't cut easily, so don't be afraid to pull quite hard on it. Make your maximum panel dimensions at least 4 inches smaller than your shrink wrap. This greatly speeds up the process of stretching it. You will however need to trim it. Taping these corners is purely aesthetic, but for such a rough construction every little bit helps. You of course want to feel pride in your work, and the workers behind this barrier will appreciate the detail. Part 4. Installation Prep Once you have made all your pieces, put together or double check your installation kit. I carry with me my signs, rope, a collection of pan head screws, some drill bits, along with small hooks, long and short self-tapping screws, coarse half-inch drywall screws, a drill, this super handy cordless heat gun, but a hairdryer can work, just bring plenty of extension cords. I definitely suggest a variety of flat brackets and L brackets. Bring blue painter's tape. Make sure your batteries are charged and bring extra. tape measure, clear packing tape. I found that these extra joints are handier than metal hardware, so grab a few of those. As you'll be doing so many of these, I strongly encourage you to wear goggles. You will be interacting with people much more closely and unpredictably than is currently recommended, so you should take extra precautions when installing. Glasses will also stop you from unconsciously touching your eyes. Part 5 installation. Try to select the least busy time to install or do the installation while the store is closed. You want to be sensitive to the customers in the store and the workers, so put up signs explaining what you are doing and why. You will find a link to several handy signs in the comments below. I loosely position my metal support bracket and put in the first piece. Often, I need the help of the person behind the register to hold something in place while I screw it in from the bottom and the back. The second addendum video, titled Mounting, is a deep dive into how to make these brackets and simpler ones from steel stud. It also covers mounting in even simpler ways with just tape, rope, etc. Then I screw together the sides or tape the sides. Each installation is going to be a little different depending on your resources and the location. After you have the entire frame up, install the door. Secure the brace, tape is totally fine. Test the door. Now you are almost done. Start to heat the shrink wrap. I like to start in the center. Be careful because you can burn a hole in the plastic. I've done that several times and have just patched it with clear tape before continuing to shrink the plastic. I like to look at it from an angle to see the micro ripples. Done well, the plastic should almost look like glass with no ripples at all. My final step is to dust the plastic from both sides and leave my number behind in case they have any issues. Part six, celebration. 
Well, this title is aspirational. You have a bit of work ahead of you before it's time to celebrate. I mean, you did just finish watching this whole tutorial, and that is something. You might not have noticed, but I've never introduced myself. This video has so much less to do with me than it has to do with you. It has been made for you. It is intended to give you an exposure to the tools and give you a good enough introduction to the skills required to make these COVID barriers. It is late in the month of May. Our country is starting to open up, and it's my view that these COVID barriers will be needed more than ever. By now, stores that can afford these barriers already have them up. So if you go into a store and see there's no sort of barrier there, it's probably not because they didn't think of it, and it's probably not because they didn't want it. It's probably because they couldn't afford it in one way or another, be it time, inspiration, or money. It would be a great honor to me if you gave the people in that store a link to this tutorial. And it would be a great honor to you if you went ahead and made them a COVID barrier. It's an invigorating feeling to service your community. It also feels good to do projects like this, to design and build things. It's alternately humbling and dignified. A very satisfying way to spend your time. I think a complete newbie could locate, design, build, and install a COVID barrier in one well-organized day. I guarantee that you will be celebrating every COVID barrier that you make. You will be walking away with a big smile on your face because it's a great feeling. Please let me know that this is working, that you are out there making COVID barriers by posting pictures of your installations and sharing the tricks that you have learned onto social media with the hashtag COVID barriers. I want to see your work and I want to celebrate with you. Hit me up with questions, COVID barriers 2020 at gmail.com. And thank you for your time. I mean, one hit wonder. Nice. Yeah.